six months later. So if you worked on a residential project before, you must know how frustrating it is to working out your fridge floor levels, the footpath gradient, garages, how you're gonna tie in everything. You change one, everything changes. Well, Site 3D is here to make our life easier. Well, at least for me, you'll be the judge of it by the end of this video. In this tutorial, we're gonna look on how to create plots, how you can assign doors, and then from doors, you can connect them to footpaths that will connect to the proposed roads, and how you can tie in your garages through the driveway with the proposed road. I'm also excited to announce that we have a new promo code for the, if you're looking to purchase Site 3D. If you use Civil Spring to purchase your new Site 3D license, you will get 5% discount. Now the promo code is valid until the 31st of May. So if you're looking to purchase your Site 3D license, use Civil Spring so you can get 5% discount. Without further ado, let's begin. So before we start creating our house and the footpath that will connect the house with the proposed road, I've took the liberty, not the liberty, I had to create the proposed road so we can be able to get a level threshold access to the house. So basically we need to know what the finished water will be so we can assess that this is level access. To create a house, we need to go to the building pad tools. Now in those tools, you can see we have the place house, then we can move and rotate if there were houses in our drawing. You can change the level of the house to reach the surface of the ground model in our case, the topographical survey. We can, we can tell the software to make sure it creates a level access, and then we can delete, uh, add some properties, connect the footpath, edit the house template, but we don't have any. And then we have this house type manager. Now in the house type manager, you can import houses from other drawings. So if you go browse and you find another drawing, a site 3D drawing, you can import houses from there. In our case, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do everything from scratch. To do everything from scratch, we're gonna go to place house. This window will appear, house definition. It was gonna ask us, hey, what house do you wanna place? Well, we don't have any, so we're gonna click on new. So now the new wall line command has been selected. So basically that we're gonna can start drawing the outer walls of the house. But first we need to make sure our snapping is enabled. I'm gonna snap around the corners of the house, Create my house, once I'm done, right click, finish. I can see the circle with the cross mark that is the base point and the arrow shows the rotation like the face, how it's gonna be inserted. I wanna change the rotation of the house. So I'm gonna go to the set house rotation. You can see there's arrows around the house. I'm going to click on that once. And then when I hover over the walls of the house, they get highlighted. I want this one. So the arrow will be facing that way. The next step is to add my doors. So I'm going to click on the add door button. And then I'm going to do a front door. So, and then OK. Now you can see when I hover my mouse, it shows a triangle, which is basically the insertion point of the door. However, in my case, I want the door to be between those two points. To do that, the site 3D has a nice feature, find the midpoint between the two points. So it's here. So we click on that. I click on my first point and on the second point and place the door. Now I'm going to right click, quick command, and I'm going to add another door again, but in this one will be a patio door. I'm going to click OK. Now again, I'm going to do the midpoint one. I'll select the first point, second point, that's the midpoint. And then I'm going to do a side door here. So I'm going to right click, quick command, add the door, side door, hit OK, midpoint, those two lines, and there we go. I right, click, quick command. We've specified all this. Now I can go to the properties and define some stuff. So the name will be house one the type we can select between a house or garage in our case it's a house when we do a house it automatically picks up the dpc ground offset 150. if you do garage it will be zero so side three or the accounted for that however you can untick the auto and change it if you want and you can set the brick course height if i hit ok now you can see nothing happened it was just basically the property has been saved and i need to hit the apply changes so finish line flag and then it will bring the building properties window one last time to make sure everything is fine and hit OK. And you can see that these are the building paths for the door. And you can see in 3D view, we have our house. And if I scroll under, you can see the building pads. However, they don't seem right. So I'm going to go change that. So I'm going to go back to my building pad tools. And I'm going to click on the house with the pen, edit house item value. And when I hover over, you can see I can edit values of the house. So I'm going to edit the first uh, landing of the door. Now, I don't want any offset from the finished floor level. So absolute level is the same as the house. So I'm going to go width. I think the width I've wrote it here should be one. 
0.5 and the depth is one so if i hit okay you can see it adjusted it and i'm gonna do the same for this one so this one sh the width is 2.4 and 1.35 right okay there we go and now for this one the width is 0.9 and depth is one if i hit okay you can see we've got it now the reason i've done these is because I want the footpath to come straight here and that is where the landing. Now you can have this one as zero and connect the footpath straight away here and then you will have to adjust manually the footpath to hug around the landing if you wish. But this makes it slightly easier. So once I'm done, right click, quick command. Now I want to connect my landing of the house with the, f with the footpath of the road. So you can see in 3D it's lower. As you can see that's the box there. There is a command add path. So I'm going to click on that one. And then I'm going to select this path and it will connect it. Now you can see it says it's S. That means it's stepped because it's super steep. So if we go to the long section of the footpath to access it, we're going to go to the footpath tool and driveway tools. Click on the long section, select the footpath and you can see bring it up. Now you can see that's our path and that is the gradient. What's the percentage? 22%. That's a lot. So we need to adjust it. Now in the building path tools, there is this button called level access. So if you click on it and then select the house, it will automatically assign the finish level that would create a level axis. If it's too flat for you, in our case it's way too flat, you can see the long section automatically got updated. So let's just zoom out, you can see it's super flat. So I want to up it a tiny bit. So I'm going to go, instead of level axis, I'm going to go to level house, select the house and then change it and add 75 mil. Now, if you've done like 50 mil, it will tell you the nearest brick course, which is 675. So I'm going to click set and it will set the finish photo and then hit OK. Now you can see we've got a gradient 3.8, which is not bad. It's actually quite decent. I'm going to close my long section and the house is kind of done. Now let's do our garage. So I'm going to go to place house. We're going to do a new one and we are in the new outer wall line. I'm going to make sure my snappings are enabled and I'm going to start snapping around the garage. And right click finish. Again, I'm going to change the rotation and then I'm going to add a door, which in our case will be a garage door. So hit OK. Now I want to find the midpoint. So select the midpoint. So between this point and this point, that's our midpoint. Seems about right. I click quick command. Now I'm going to edit the house item value because I want my garage doors to extend all the way. So the width will be 5.6 in our case will be slightly off so you'll see now in a second so in the properties i'm gonna type garage one type is a garage so if i do a garage you can see the pc offset is zero so i'm gonna hit ok so you can see 15075 but you can see there is no offset from the finish roll level however in our case 675 1525 so you can see the 150 drop between the house, but the garage there is none. So I'm going to click apply changes and apply changes again and hit OK. Now I'm going to go to building path tools, add my path, select the garage door. You can see when I hover over it, the highlighted shows the extent of the door. You can see there is still a little gap here. So if I select that, you can see it created the footpath. However, we didn't add our drop curve. We're gonna come in and later on and add it. But for now, let's not worry about that. And we're gonna go to level axis. So we're gonna do level axis. However, this is not gonna work. Why? Because this is a garage, it doesn't have a level axis. Fix it to have the gradients that you want. We're gonna go to footpath and driveway tools, long section, select the footpath, and then what we're gonna do is, it's just adjust it to what we want. So it's one in 17 now. So if you're happy with it, fine by me. But the problem you have is the side door will not work. So I'm gonna bring this one up. So I'm gonna go back to my building path tools and go to level house, select this one. And let's say, let's make it 525 as well. So I hit okay. You can see it's one in 86, which is not bad. It's okay. So 1525, 1525, about to work, time bit flattish. I can do it 15256 maybe. That should slightly make it work. There you go. And that is in 1 and 246. Super flat. However, as I said, we didn't add our drop curves because how the car is going to get over there. So let's go add our drop curve. So we're going to right click quick command and we're going to go to the drop curve tools, which is next to the drainage tool, the water tap. And I'm going to click on add drop curve. And you can see there's this line and I'm gonna, let me close the long section first. So you can see the line, that's the line. 
So basically we need to tell the start point and end point. So I'm going to make sure my snappings are enabled. That's my start point. That's my end. Let's make sure we snap. That's my end point. And now we have some options. It's like, hey, how do you want the footpath? Add both sides of the road. You want full depth. You want rectangular style. You want drop back of the footpath. It's up to you how you do it. In my case, I think I'm going to go for full path depth and I'm just going to keep it like this. I'm gonna not going to do the drop fully dropped one. So I'm going to hit OK. And you can see it created the drop curve footpath. Now, if I go view the long section in the footpath driver and tools log section, I can have a look. It's still flattish. So I have two options. Either I'm going to add the point somewhere here to make it slightly higher so it can fall that way and that way, or I'm going to lift the garage up. But I run into the problem of not matching that level. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to keep it at 1525. So I will, ha I will actually lower it from 1525. Have this one as kind of being the high point so it can fall that way, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. So 246, here we're at 15.618. So we can lower it even further and add just a drainage channel there. So that's one solution. So let's just lower our house, our garage, sorry. So level house, let's lower it to, I don't know, um, 450. Yeah, 450 is a brick course. There we go. Hit OK. So the gradient is 152. And to make sure that at this point we're at 1525, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here in the long section, click on the add point, and then right click, pick change from plan view, because I want to select from the plan where the 1525 is, make sure my snapping is enabled, and I'm going to put it from here so it can fall backwards, maybe from there, there. And I'm going to set it at 1525. Maybe it will become 500 because it will, it will fall away from it. So 25 mil fall, that seems reasonable. So hit OK. And now you've got this one at 15.5. So if I scroll the way down, you can see 15.5. So we've got 1 in 8 and then 1 in 200. Now let's bring our contours just so we can see better what we're doing. So I'm going to hit OK. And you can see. 1.5 goes to 450 and then from 1.5, 150, 600, 650. So it will kind of fall towards the garage with the drainage channel here and make sure that we kind of tied in with the footpath here. Seems about right to me. Now you might have noticed that I missed this section here. Now, obviously this is on purpose because I want to show you how you can edit an existing house. So let's close our long section for now and let's just rotate the 3D view just so we can see. And what I'm going to do now is go to building pad tools and I'm going to go to edit house template. I'm going to select my house and I'm going to use the add point and make sure my snapping is enabled. I'm going to add the point here and then I'm going to add another one there and another one there and then right click with. So I'm finished. So I'm going to hit apply changes. So you've got now the new extent. Now I'm going to add the door. So I'm going to go building pad tools, edit house template, select it, add the door, add your door. I'm going to select the midpoint between those two and right click, quick command, finish, apply changes. I can see this is way bigger. So I'm going to just measure quickly. I'm going to go to additional tools, measure line, snapping, from there to there is 1.35 and to there is 2.4. So I'm going to go to building pad tools, edit house item value, select the footpath. So it was 2.4 and 1.35, I think. There we go. So now we are done. So I hope you found this tutorial useful and don't forget to use the Civil Spring promo code so you can get 5% discount before the 31st of May. Hit the like and subscribe button to show your support and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.